I remember that just when we were offering free videos to people and they're like, no, I'm not interested. I'm just like, well, the video is going to help you do this and do that. And it just came down to me talking to somebody else. So they're like, dude, that sounds awesome. When can we shoot? You got to find a client that value what you're doing because at any time when you try to show the value to someone, you're selling. <laughs> Well, yeah, so I had a few questions on there, obviously. Really the biggest one I'm thinking about right now is uh, the first question I'd asked that had all the details about that very specific situation with mm -hmm. a client I'm working with. And I think it's kind of a formula and scenario I'm gonna be encountering more often as I bring on more clients that are retainer clients. Mm -hmm. um, especially because I've noticed a lot of the people I work with, uh, businesses I'm working with, don't usually do video before they work with me. If they do, really the reason they start working with me is because they're realizing they want to you know, step it up. And so just showing them the value of what is being made and the efficiency of it and the fact that mm -hmm. it's working um, is something I, I want to be able to do for them. And, you know, that comes down to like the efficiency of like the ads and SEO. And I could obviously look up on YouTube, like how to do SEO stuff all day. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, as far as what I'm showing to the client and what information is valuable to them, I'm sure you have experience with. So, yeah. So, I mean, in, in that scenario right now, the videos you produce for them, like what's the process? Are you just giving them the videos and they're running their own ads or like, what does that entail? Usually. So in the past, it, it has been like that uh, for the majority of the time. Simple shoot day for that month worth of content usually goes by pretty quick. I edit them together, um, give it to them, and they're the ones who are publishing it. I noticed, though, I was talking to the gym I've been working with. Uh, if you saw the little five minute piece yep. I had made for them, um, and I just realized like they, I was making these videos for them, and it just seemed like they weren't being published in a way that was going to do anything. And so I was worried for them that they would be wasting money. Mm -hmm. uh, in that instance, because they have a good looking video, like I want them to be able to use it for what it's intended for. And so I just asked them, like, do you guys feel like, you know, you're happy with how the YouTube is looking at the moment and you're happy with results you're getting from these? And they're like, to be honest, we were just going to talk to you about that because we feel like we're not publishing it in a way that's uh, working. So I've, I've recently started taking up some of those efforts for them as well and uh, increase the price on the monthly retainer. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at their website right now. So all the, the videos are not the website. I'm looking at their YouTube. So have you done all their videos here or what the videos have you worked with them? Yeah. So all the, they have some serious stuff going up at the moment. So like they premise of the gym is it's a pretty expensive membership. They ask for 2,400 bucks a year from the okay. members and they plan out a workout every single day. Mm -hmm. Liz, the founder is a professional and trains, uh, gold medalists, like athletes. Um, she helps a lot of people with injuries who you know, are declared unable to walk, uh, yeah. fix that problem and become functional again with fitness. And so they have explainer videos for their clients telling them each week what they're looking for. So I've done those. Uh, they have a little series called the lowdown, uh, where they're talking about common fitness questions, some that they get from their members. Um, they have some other live stream stuff. I think they did from like a year ago. I tried to kind of clear things out of bit because it was really messy mm -hmm. um so i think most of what you're seeing on the uploads right now is stuff i've made i mean right now so they have what like 10 videos or more than 10 uh like 13 so the biggest one is the one that you did at the fitness for any time anyone anywhere yeah yeah, yeah. So that one's like a thousand views <clears throat> mm -hmm. you know do you know why that one got a thousand views versus <laughs> yeah because we uh we're pushing advertisements for it okay Cool. <clears throat> that's yeah, that's kind of another specific of this question is I'm we're starting out with just a very small like $500 ad spend. Mm -hmm. And I'm pushing out these videos and just seeing how well they're doing and taking these numbers back to them and, you know, reassessing with them. Yeah. And that's just not something I've done before. And I want to mm -hmm. make sure I'm doing it effectively. So how are you running the ads <laughs> just through Google ads? Okay, cool. Yeah. So what, what I actually so I mean, Google ads is a good way to go. Uh, what I've done in the past, I've actually used a website called Sprizzy. And like you could do like, I think the minimum, it's like 30 bucks on one video and they'll get mm. you between like 700 to a thousand views on there. Uh, but just looking at something that I, that you should look into getting is TubeBuddy and uh, vidIQ because right now the videos are not, um, they're not optimized in the sense of like different things that you could be doing, like their best practices of like, uh, so you have a high resolution thumbnail, but like you don't have info cards, there's no end screens added. Mm. Um, just like, there's a bunch of different things when you, when you use these softwares, it would tell 
tell you some of those things are and then along with um what keywords you could be using to actually rank the videos because you guys have I mean you guys have a good amount of videos and you're, you're starting to post pretty frequently mm -hmm. so let me look at their website do you think um like TubeBuddy I know of TubeBuddy I have a client who uses it a uh -huh. guy I do real estate content for he pays for TubeBuddy and uh uses it and he definitely saw like a good increase in uh you know organic yeah. viewership and everything um do you think that's something that because I know it, it, it's specific to the account you're paying with would it be better for me to have it on my account and pay for that or would it be better for each client to say you guys should look into getting to buddy um you should see what makes sense for you i personally the way i use it i bought two buddy for i'll show you right now let me share my screen okay so like i have my so this is for like my rodrigo tasca and i have mm -hmm. like these are the other accounts i manage for different people but what i'll do i'll just use my personal one to look because like, i can come in here and look at your videos and then i can see like um so like you're telling me like hey you're not going by the best practices for here you're not using any tags on here gotcha, gotcha. so like just things like that so even though this is their workout explained for the week there's no reason why you can't be looking looking up like um wait are these like home workouts or these workouts you're gonna do no yeah so these are these are the workouts that are planned out uh for members in the gym mm -hmm. so each day they have a whole plan for the workouts and she just lets you know like how hard you should be going kinds of reps you should be doing things like that gotcha so so i guess like in part of this they also have an app correct yes and they're that's like kind of their main focus right now okay um because they realize kind of the longevity of the app if they can get that up and running it mm -hmm. helps them out a lot as a brand so i'm trying to really narrow in on bringing in uh, more clients to the app gotcha yes i mean this one would just tell me like you know the volume for this 40 which is not bad competition is pretty low um and then like the way that i would do this is i'd go into this video and here is telling me all the tags that he's using right and then i can use mm -hmm. this tool to see okay these are the ranking pretty good and you can start using this to kind of start building up your hashtag list of what you need to be using for each one of the ones that include the fitness app to start getting the organic you know ranking and then it's just like pretty much you have to go down like a couple different uh rabbit holes because then you can go to this one and then start seeing you know tell you like hey, this is a good one and just get into like you know different ones and then seeing what other channels are using it and then go down to the rabbit hole see what other ones so, like i have like um, um word docs with a bunch of different keywords i already know depending for the different markets i work with i already have a set of keywords i know that work better for, than others just from the like research i've done but mm. that'd be the one way that i'll approach it but if you're looking to get signups to people to download the app it's really going to come down to um i think instagram is going to be because like the hard thing about like with youtube i mean it's not as hard because it's everything is possible but it's a lot easier i think for someone to be an instagram scroll Scrolling and be able to want to download a fitness app, right? When you mm, when you're already on the device, yeah. exactly. When I'm on YouTube, mostly I'm here doing research on a desktop. So for me to convert on a desktop to go into an app, it's going to be a lot harder. Uh, but I think it's part of like you know the advertisement, like cross platform advertising. Like yeah, that makes sense. When it comes down to like I would be maximizing like my conversion would be for just to get video views on YouTube for the most part and then i'll focus on doing conversion ads on instagram and then gotcha. other tools that i would do would be you know about a uh, facebook ads library uh no i've actually never really used facebook ads okay before. so facebook ads library uh it's another tool that if you're creating ads for that business i go on here and you know any of your competitors or like what what are different apps that people are using for honestly no i haven't i haven't gotten anything from them uh -huh. um i haven't really found any myself they have a pretty unique program um with what they're doing so i'm not sh entirely sure anything exactly compares to what they okay. have well but in, in the same sense you know i just typed in fitness app this come up so i'll start doing research to see what kind of ads these other companies are making just mm -hmm. to kind of give you an idea and it's also it would be like you know what are they using for copy those are the like i come through here like when i start running ads for myself i was looking up you know who uh jacob owens is he uh what is it? i think is a buff nerd is like the media company that he has oh yeah 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 so same thing i came up here to see what he was doing what were the ads that he was running just to kind of get an idea of like what is it like just to come gotcha. up with content ideas so i'm letting because 
some of these organizations are really big, right? And they have a whole marketing team versus just like one person doing all of this. So like, I'm yeah. trying to figure out how can I make this as easy as possible for myself. Gotcha. Yeah. I I never knew about the Facebook ads library. I think that'll yeah. be really useful. Yeah. So I mean, this, and that's just good to show them like, Hey, this is what somebody else is doing. Uh, I mean, I think this would be a really great, a uh, couple of different ideas for us to run ads. And like, you can kind of show them like, Hey, I've done some research in the market. This is what the competition is doing. We need to be doing this with not more or better right yeah and then you you know and you just it just honestly just going down like and then the other way to do this probably i'll probably go to um i know you said that the program is different but just go to the app store look up the top fitness apps and then go to facebook ads library and then type in all of those to figure oh, out what gotcha. those ads are doing you know what i mean the other kind of hard thing about marketing this at the moment and i feel like i should maybe talk to them about fixing this on their end but you actually, for some reason, you can't sign up for the app through the app. You have to sign up through the website for the app and then log in to the app, which I remember when I first heard that, I was like, that seems to just kill the flow of the funnel right there. Yeah. And I'd say they're a huge thing too. It's like, um, you know, when clients talk about they're not getting results for certain things, it's like what I've been learning with working with like crit. And, th and this is something else you could do too. It's like, you can offer different tiers of level of like packages of like, Hey, this, I can give you the guidelines of what you need to do. I can help you do it or I can do everything else for you. And then you have three different pricing, uh, factors and going into it. But like when you leave it up to the clients to do certain things that they don't know how to do, or like, you know, like, Hey, we're not getting results, but you're like, yes, we have a problem inside of your funnel where conversions are dropping off. Like that is a problem. Right. And there's nothing that yeah. you can do about it. It's something they need to do in their end. So like at that point, if you're being responsible, for that how is it that that's your responsibility because that has nothing to do with the video at that point right you can yeah. send them all the leads that they want but if they are not gonna fix that barrier there um so i think you need to you need to figure out another way that you can measure results in a sense of like how much traffic are you sending to them to the videos and then like when it comes down to the conversion page um something else that they need to be looking at is uh, do they have uh, google analytics set up on their website because i think that's another huge factor to see where is the drop off happening gotcha you know anything you think Google that, analytics? Yeah, I mean, I, I actually haven't used it in conjunction with like a client's website or anything. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I, I should probably learn more about that. But I've just been like binging learnings, all this mm -hmm. stuff the past month, like just nonstop every day. Yeah finding time where I can to learn more. Well, that's really like, and that's something else you have to consider and, and think for yourself. And like, I went, I struggled through this because I actually stopped doing uh, ads for clients because I was getting so bogged down. Like running ads is a job by itself. Mm. So it's like, for me, <clears throat> I stopped, like I pretty much took a, like a back seat to filming just to focus on running ads to clients at the end. Like after like doing this for three months, like I hate running ads like because it's there's so much that goes into it if you having to look at the analytics figuring out why things aren't converting having to like refresh your ads and i'm just like i want to shoot video like i don't want to sit here and set up ads for people and then you know they only want to spend a couple hundred dollars to do this i'm just like was it was that worth it for me because like there's a lot of knowledge base that goes into that itself so for me it made more sense for me to partner up with marketing agencies that needed video content and i'll send them a client and i get a commission like hey if i bring you a client that's going to run facebook or whatever kind of ads with you i get 10 percent a month of how long they stay with you as a uh, uh, a client gotcha. right and i put that together in a, in a contract for them because like i just didn't want to run the ads anymore but that was just my you know personal experience and how has that been working for you and your clients now as opposed to when you were running them are you seeing a lot more success um i mean <laughs> the clients are still working with them you know what i mean okay. so yeah in that sense you know i think they're happy and that's something that i kind of came like hands off with that i mean they're still booking me to do videos so i know the videos are working but at the end of the day it's just like i wanted to make sure my clients are getting the best best thing for them. So I want to make sure that they were getting somebody that all they do is run video ads or, you know, all these other type of ads versus me trying to run the ads and do my video production business. It's like, at what expense is it, is this benefiting the client or is it benefiting me? You know, and then when mm. you really start putting the client's best interests first, then to me, that's worth more than anything. Cause then the longevity of the relationship is going to be, you know, to me much richer. Gotcha. Are you just 
as far as marketing agencies, are you just kind of working with places local to you or is there a bigger platform you're using? Um, there's a couple of different platforms that you can like uh, one of them is Gennaro and you can sign up because like right now there's a there's a really big push coming for like on demand stuff with just like the streaming platforms. So quick frame quick frame is one of them. So like there's a lot of people that are, they need content for Hulu. Like if you can get in right now, they like close their beta stuff mm -hmm. right now. But like um Quick Frames one, you can sign up to be a uh, content creator for them. So you can create ads that run on like for like local TV when people are running, like, you know, watching Hulu, then like a local pizza shop could run their start running their TV commercials on Hulu, which I think gotcha. is way smarter because I, I see fucking commercial for like, I want to say Rolls Royce, but some like big brand that I'm like no interest in buying. But I'm like, why is it not more small businesses doing this kind of stuff? So Janeiro mm. is one of them. So those Quick Frame. Shutter. This is another one to shutter lock. This one's crazy because this one you get like this one's like worldwide in the sense of like dev projects all over the place. And it's talking about like a hundred thousand dollar projects, sixty thousand dollar projects. So like this one's like what? No, twenty thousand dollar project, fifty thousand dollar one. Gotcha. I'm actually need to look at this one. Twenty thousand right here in Fort Lauderdale. I didn't even see this one. So this is one of them, right? So like that's the way I do it. And then other ones, my website is um ranked local, like uh it's like ranked very well in my area. So like right now we just got booked by an agency in the Netherlands that's doing like a series of interviews and like a couple of people that work for their company are based here in South. So they're hiring us to do um some filming for them. So are you in, do you have a Google my business listing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. How, how's that looking? Uh, I mean, it looks good. I remember when I first kind of got that up and running, I made sure to put a lot of posts and try to get some good stills um, from footage I had shot. I really, anything related to my website, I haven't touched. I want to, but I also, so like my LLC at the moment is just really my last name. It's just Duplain Media LLC. Yeah. So probably similar to what you have going on, but yep. I, I, I kind of want to reshape that into more of kind of like a market brand in the sense of like what my logo is, um, mm -hmm. you know, what my name is. And so I, I want to redo my website, but I kind of want to establish that brand identity first so I can integrate it into the website before yeah. I completely rework it. So that's something I'm going to have to, you know. Why do you want to do that? But to be honest, I, I just am not in love with how basic it is structured right now, I guess. Um, the website or the name? Just just the name and the company in general. Okay. Uh, that's something I've always known even since before I started my business, just looking at how other people had built theirs, mm -hmm. that if, you know, if it's just a representation of me, I'm not not super in love with that i want to be able to kind of take that identity away from myself so when i'm hiring like a bigger team of people it is like all of us you know mm -hmm. what i mean yeah um, just, i haven't really formulated exactly why in my head but it, it's something i've always known i think since gotcha before i started it yeah i mean i feel in that one i mean i think if i was to do it again i probably would have not done task of studios i've done something else but at this point i'm kind of uh committed to it so i'm yeah. better off just starting off with another company and calling it calling that so yeah okay so i guess I don't know if we ended up uh, answering your questions about the packages, though. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, you know, my takeaway is I'll look into just for now for this first month with them, just running things on Instagram and just seeing how they're going. And uh, um, and then, you know, after we look at the results, if, you know, and it'll be clear to me whether it's working or not as well, but I may honestly end up trying to figure out a route for them as far as uh, teaming up with some kind of uh, marketing side of it that's outside my business. Because you're right, like, I don't want to get bogged down with that. Um, it's something I'm interested in learning just because I promised myself I wanted to learn more about marketing because that's a huge part of why I'm making the videos. But you know, you're right, like actually running that half of it is not something I'm interested in. So yeah, and, and like I have a buddy of mine that uh, and here's the thing too, when you're able, I think it's one thing that when you have a team around you that you're able to do that, because then like, because I think when you're able to do this as a full package as like a business for uh, what he does, like he's, he's like, they only do like uh, destination stuff for companies. Mm -hmm. What he started doing now is he's actually running Facebook and YouTube ads for the videos that he's putting together so he'll pretty much he'll come in and they will shoot like um like he'll do like a thirty thousand dollar package and like he'll shoot like 10 videos for you and then run ads for you for those videos mm. but that's all he does but it took him like four years to get to this point because like he needed to like build out his team around him and get into people in and he doesn't run the ads now he has like two people overseas that run the ads for him but at one point he's like dude he's like i'm like i'm so bogged down right because then you're 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 stressed 
stretch so far in between because you're like running ads, you're trying to get clients, you're trying to film, and then everything else around you ends up, you know, losing quality. So then he's like working on running ads for a client. And then all of a sudden the client's like, this isn't working. We don't want to do ads anymore. And then he just mm -hmm. spent all this time trying to do that and spent no time doing like business leads and stuff like that. So it took him a while that he finally like, you know, figured out like his whole flow to the system, but he had to add, like keep adding people slowly into the team to be able to do this. Um, and then yeah, I think, go ahead. Uh, it's, it's hard too. Cause it's like the, the clients I work with, like I, I love the people I work with a lot. Like they're all young and they've all started their own businesses and they have like a mindset and an approach on their business that really inspires me. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to be a part of the reason why their business is growing. And I care a lot about the fact that they're seeing that growth and I want to be able to help them. But at the same time, you're right. It's part of half of me is like, I really just want to focus on the video, but I can't completely help them grow their business. When I do that, I feel like, like I've, I, whenever I've done that, I always feel like something's missing a little mm -hmm. bit, but then. I also don't want to be running these ads for them. Um, but it, it's just hard because it's like part of that is what's going to get them to where they want to be. So exactly. I mean, one thing I know that you can focus on right now, which I think it's I think anyone is creating videos, especially like what you're doing with them in that sense is learning how to optimize videos for YouTube. Mm. I think that's going to be I think that's something that you could like with every video that you do, you need to because then you end up getting like wins like, you know, like there's a couple clients like all the videos I shoot for like dentists and stuff like that all these videos appear in like number one for google which then helps them get um like booster seo ranking which that's where a lot of people want like you, you want to show up number one in google in the, the seo and video has a huge part of that and this is something that would take you like 20 minutes to do in each video but has a like it's like hey dear client go over to youtube and type in you know lake mary dentist tell me what shows up and they go in there and they're like holy shit we're number one i'm like yeah and like you know that's <laughs> a win right there that that's matters awesome. to them so that's like a little thing but i think the other thing that with what you're doing it's um you know i was starting out with like hey what is the goal of this video project like why are we shooting these videos so we make sure that we're aligned and then also like how are we measuring the results for this how do we know this video is going to be successful for your brand because like what i used to think was successful for them is very different than what they might think is successful for them because we never know what is their like internal motives and what they're actually trying to do so making sure at the end of the day that they're like, hey, if we get, you know, this certain amount of reach reviews, then this is what how we're measuring success. Then you know what you're striving for. But, mm -hmm. you know, when you're trying to figure out, like, hey, is this video working for you? You guys have nothing to measure that or at least because sometimes, you know, they'll tell you something and then a month later, that answer is a little bit different. But we never mm -hmm. knew that. But at least now you have some type of like, like, hey, we both we had this conversation about what this goal is going to be like, just to make sure that we're both on the same page for that. But gotcha. for your monthly package, so this 4000, you go out and shoot four videos for them. Yeah. Um. So the 4000 that what they're getting out of that is the four YouTube videos mm -hmm. and they put those up weekly. Okay. Uh, so they four month. And then we'll also from that same shoot, I might just ask a few related questions, whether it's about like business or uh you know, their specialty that we can, <clears throat> when they answer, I can turn that into micro content for uh, like reels and shorts and whatnot. Gotcha. I mean, honestly, I think you should be charging more than this for what you're doing for 4,000. Even if you think, even if I took away like the, the marketing aspects of it, I think with the marketing aspects, you need to be charging like $8,000 for this. Like the video I shot on, like how long does it take you to go out and, sh and film these four videos? Really not long at all. Give, uh, me a, give me a time. Literally set up to wrap probably no longer than three hours. Okay. So three hours, so three hours for you to set up and wrap. How long does it take you to get all your gear ready? Uh, beforehand? Yeah. Um, usually it doesn't take me that long. I kind of have a good process for getting this stuff out. I'd say maybe tops if all things considered like an hour, I guess. Okay. But... And then you come back home, break everything down another hour. So what is your hourly rate? Um, are you asking like at that point, like what that I'm time asking spent? you right now, like what's your hourly rate for production and business? Uh, usually I just go by day rates. Um, right what now, if I were giving it to someone, it's usually 800 just with very minimal gear, uh, with everything I'd say a thousand. Okay. So that's then... just the number I had before though, to be honest, like so I haven't that, pitched that's... day rates in a while. So that's what, like a hundred dollars an hour? Yeah, more or less. Okay. Um, I think you could bump that up, but yeah, I think you should be at least doing like at least one fifty. Um, and then I always do, I always do half days or full day rates for clients. Yeah. Where, oh, I have like a two hour minimum. Like right now, my my hourly rate's three hundred an hour. Um, so you're at 800 and then you're editing, you said four videos, three to four videos, yeah, so right? I'm not in love with editing the YouTube content, 
um just a thing i've done it for a long time at this point and it's just kind of fallen off for me um, yeah in my list of interests so i know a guy he edits a ton of linkedin learning courses i went to high school with him i um, mean he's an equally confident editor so i pay him 125 per video to put those together um so by the end of the month that's 500 a month mm -hmm. and then i uh i really like putting together the smaller uh creative pieces uh the short form stuff yeah um so i'll do that so what, what I like you to start doing is um, start recording, like start doing a screen recording and talking throughout. Like I want, I would like for you to, I know the guy's editing these other videos for you, but if you get the chance to do one of them, if you're not bogged down, edit one of them. I'm actually doing that, that recent one I just sent you. I, it's his birthday this week. So as a birthday gift, I edited that one for him and okay. just like said, don't worry about it. So, yeah. So do a screen recording of how you edit and okay. like, uh, kind of like, um, forgot like a commentary of like, Hey, okay. Like literally imagine, imagine that you're creating a training guide. Like, hey guys, mm -hmm. so we're going to start importing the footage. This is how you import the footage. This is how the timeline is going to look like. Okay, you see how this happened on the shot? We're going to start the cut here and the cut there. So do that for your one, for your uh, YouTube videos, but also do that for your short videos. Okay. Because honestly, I think you may, I, mean, I know you probably have a good relationship with that guy, but I think you getting somebody else to start editing these videos for you even cheaper. Like I got people in the Philippines right now that they charge me like six bucks an hour. Okay. So like, I'm getting like my YouTube videos done for like 30 bucks. Wow. Yeah. How are you connecting with them? Um. So the way we've done it is uh, went on Facebook and uh, like went on Facebook found um like facebook groups for editors overseas so we've got people we had like two people in india uh like one guy in colombia like a lot of people in the philippines the biggest thing with them was that you had to make sure that they had like fast enough internet um make sure that they were able to learn how to work with proxies uh so like there's there are hurdles and things you have to jump through in the beginning but like eventually when we got past that like my profits like were going up because I, I was paying one i was paying a guy before that was working with me like 160 a day to come in and edit with me and then mm. i was having these other people work overseas and i was paying them like 160 a week and they're working like 40 hours and i i told them like i was like how much do you want i wasn't even like telling them was six bucks an hour i was like literally like had them fill out the form had a call with them i'm like how much do you want to get paid first like i want six bucks an hour i want eight dollars an hour i'm like done done i was like let's get like let's get working okay. that's unreal it is but you know it's a global market but the other big issue that we went through was just making sure that you know be like hey my company runs on eastern standard time i understand that you're inside the other side of the world but I expect you to be able to work through these hours so like that's a big thing because in the beginning i had other people that were, they were working overseas and it was like as i was getting up they're going to sleep and i needed things so like hey at least i need you to stay up till like three o'clock in the morning at your time so if there's anything that i need that morning i need you i need to be able to get that from you mm. so there are those hurdles that you had to go through in the beginning but eventually you know my profit margin some of these projects are huge or at least like the project i'm working on this morning i could send them the project files tell them like hey pick all the selects cut all the shit i don't need start putting together a timeline send a project over to me but then today this morning i was on linkedin connecting with like marketing director in my area doing all that business stuff and i want to finish this call you'll send me over to project files i get hopping on that so like i just saved myself you know two hours of my time doing you know junior level editing stuff that i don't need to do but now i can hop on a project and get it done a much faster and i spent like what 15 bucks like you know what i mean wow yeah um but I think you need to look at so like right now you're looking at eight pieces of content at four thousand. Yeah, man. Like I charged the video shot on even though that was like a full day. So that was a full day shoot for me. And you know, that was one like we're shooting them one a one minute, two minute video. No one minute. We're shooting a one two minute video and that was for four thousand mm. dollars. So I just think you're doing a lot for shooting and producing all of this for four K and also trying to do any marketing efforts for them. True. Where at one point to maybe it's like you could cut down the amount of videos that they want and still do marketing. That's where I think having different like levels of tiers of packages um, could also be beneficial. Um, how do you feel about that? 
I, I mean, like that's a that'd be a great scenario to be in. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's hard because it's like I love working with his name is Kyle, the editor yeah. I work with. Like I love working with them. He's uh, I consider him like a friend. Yeah. And like you want to take care of your people and like give them work, um, especially because he's like another freelancer. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's hard to like make that decision to just like <laughs> cheap out, you know, not know. necessarily cheap out. You're running a business, but like the way to do it. And what I did with the guy that was working here with me is that I just gave him more of like a senior position so like the weeks that i was busy i had him finish up the projects that those guys are doing because at that sense like i was spending because like he would spend a lot of time here like when we're doing like my behind the scenes footage for youtube he'll literally spend a whole day here just scrubbing through the footage so i'm like dude i just, I just paid this guy 160 to scrub footage for me where he's a way better editor than the guys in the philippines so what i was like okay it makes more sense for me to give the footage to the people in the philippines have them scrub it put it together with with the best selects into a timeline, give that project file to Doug and let Doug be creative with that stuff. So now I'm not paying Doug $160 a day just to scrub footage for me because it just like, it doesn't make sense, right? In a sense is like, do you want to, like, I understand you're gonna take care of your friends, but it's like, do you, do you want to grow your business as well? Yeah, the sooner yeah, that you sure. get into those, like having those systems and things like that, that's when you're able to scale because then you're like, you know, like I said, you're either out shooting or you're out there um, doing some business development. Have you had any issues as far as hiring overseas with maintaining like timelines on a weekly basis? I know you talked about like the the time zones not lining up, but especially if you're putting it out like every week and there's the expectation of that. Have you had problems with that? Um, Yeah, we have. And I think that's just uh, part of the beginning of like you letting them know that like, hey, you know, missing deadlines is not acceptable here. It's like if mm-hmm. you if you're telling me it's going to be ready tomorrow morning, my expectations is it's going to be ready tomorrow morning. But then the other thing I learned is that if they tell me it's going to be ready Monday, I'm giving myself to Wednesday. Because I think as as creatives, we always we always do that. We think it's always going to take, you know, last time that it really does. And then, you know, premiere crashes or whatever the situation is <laughs> yeah. and shit happens. So if it's like, hey, it's me ready Monday, I'm like telling my client they can have it Wednesday. Uh, so I just want to give myself a little bit of uh, some, you know, buffer space there. That's really wild. I I know a lot of DPs here in Sarasota. Uh-huh. Um, bigger production companies as well. And I've just never heard of people doing that before. I mean, the, I know a guy who's his brother is a Olympic skateboarder. Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's a DP and um, he shot like for the WNBA and like a ton of other organizations. And so now he's taking time to make a full documentary on his brother. And he's like hiring out editors in Georgia and like flying back and forth from Georgia. And, I mean, I guess it's making sense for him, but when you're putting it in a context here with how much money you're saving, it's really kind of crazy. Yeah, man. It also depends how much money they're making, right? But like I had somebody also reached out to me, like for me financially at at this point, for me to pay somebody $25 or like $50 an hour, like it doesn't make sense for me, right? Because like I'm charging my clients, you know, anywhere between 60 to $75 an hour to edit. And, you know, for me to pay somebody 25 or even like other people are asking for 50 bucks an hour, it doesn't make sense for me as a business owner, right? So I think it's like for every person that you hire, they need to be able to make the three times the amount of money back for you. So like in a sense, at 25 bucks an hour, I really should be charging my client, you know, a hundred bucks because I need to make mm. that three times. So like for me, it doesn't make sense to hire somebody at 25 bucks an hour. But maybe you hire one person at 25 bucks an hour that oversees like, you know, the final sets of production, that makes sense. It also depends on, you know, the level of uh, projects that you're working on. Maybe to that guy shooting a full length documentary and he's trying to put it on Netflix. I get it. He probably doesn't want somebody overseas, but I think for like doing social media content or like, you know, this kind of stuff, I don't think it really matters that much. Really cool. I love the point too you made about making three times back what you're paying others. Cause just, I don't know, like I'm 20 years old. I went to college for filmmaking and uh, I had been doing it for a long time, uh, editing videos since I was like 12. And I dropped out of college with one semester left because I just knew like the whole time I just needed to start my business. I was already working with people. Yeah. That's kind of where my second question come comes in that I had emailed you, just like making all of it financially make sense and like mm-hmm. ultimately wanting to move out eventually and like supporting myself just with my business is something I'm thinking about a lot. So, well, I would tell you this, man, the, the longer you could stay in, like me, I guess you're probably saying your parents or something like that, the better you're, you're going to be at because like I did that and I did this at 30 years old, right? I left New York and moved back here to South Florida. 
I, I like I was literally sharing a room with my sister, my parents' house for like two years, like air mattress style. And that gave me the opportunity to take on projects that I probably wouldn't take on if I needed to pay ranks, needed to make more money or in be in the same situation of like feeling so burned out that I needed to take everything else to to pay rent versus being in a position that like kind of being more like picky with who I wanted to work with. But I think that's where, you know, when you start looking at that's what I was asking about the hours being specific of like, hey, how much time are you actually spending, you know, with actually being at a shoot, how long does it take you to break down? So I remember when I first started hiring like another company to do my productions for me, where I, I was just coming in and directing, I was like, I just saved myself so much fucking time because I was like, I didn't have to like worry about like getting the gear ready, setting up the lights, you know, all these different things. And I remember just leaving the shoot and I just got in my car and it left. It wasn't like they were like still breaking down and doing all the shit. I was like, I was like, I just bought like myself like three hours back of my day just by not even having to do the production and just being able to go out there and direct and produce and that sort of things where i'm like wow this is where chris tells us he's like you need to charge more money because when you're able to charge more money it's like you might make less but you buy yourself more time and then it's what you end up doing with that free time which really allows you to grow your business so you need to look down at like how much money am i making how many hours going to the different things because then you can start really seeing how much money do i need to make to be able to survive out there so like right now you said you're making like you know like an average how much money are you bringing in like a month changes a lot with the month to be honest this month hasn't been that much i think it's like literally like 1300 bucks just because i have some invoices and projects stacked up at the uh -huh. moment that just kind of need that last like kick out the door to be done and talking about that with the client but i mean just based off of how much i had made since i started my business like based on how many months it's been open i think mm -hmm. the average is around like six to seven thousand okay yeah, that's good yeah so the way that i do it i pretty much I pay myself 550 bucks a week to like okay. be like, you know, the face <clears throat> of Tasca Studios, whatever it is. And pretty much everything else within my business, it kind of all becomes like business expense. So like my car payments, the business pays for it. Part of my rent, like, so I rent this off or this room. I, I live in a three bedroom house. My buddy owns it. I rent this room and another room and he charged me 800 bucks a month for both of the places. So because huh. I use this room for my office, 260 of the 800 gets paid by the business. So there's like different <laughs> ways that like I go like about it. But for me, it was just like, I figured out what's the minimum amount of money that I need to make as an individual to live. And the rest of it, I just put everything back into my business. For you, if you're trying to move out, it's really going to come down to like, okay, how much is it going to be for the place you want to live at? Looking at like, you literally just got to look at the numbers and yeah. then give yourself you know, if you're still living at home, give yourself like, you know, save up for six months of uh, like, just imagine you don't get a job for six months, you know, give yourself that flight room for you to be able to make it. And then, you know, start just charging more money for projects. I know at first, it's like a little bit scary because like I've been turning down projects for like a thousand bucks or $1,500 because to me, it just doesn't make sense. I'd rather keep working on my business and try to lend like a $10,000 project than it is for me to go out there and spend half a day shooting something and then editing for like a thousand dollars just to me right now doesn't make yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely kind of had that wake up call recently, just like checking out my taxes so far in the year, like how much I think I'd owe. Uh -huh. And I literally like that night, I swear I was like, just cracked out on like figuring out what the numbers were going to be. Cause uh -huh. I literally have them like taped on my wall. So I don't forget yeah. at this point. Cause I used to say the same thing. Like my minimum per project is like a thousand bucks. And then I actually broke that down and like looked at how much like I'd be paying myself, how much the company would make, like you have to consider gear and then how much is going to taxes. And I'm like, oh my God, that's like, I'd be better off just working at Publix or it somewhere similar. And then, so now you're right. Like I'm just looking at bigger numbers and like how I've broken it down and it, trying to pitch those to clients but it's like finding that balance i guess yeah and that's the thing too like and i already talked about like showing the value to the clients and i think the biggest thing that i was like a wake-up call for me is it's you gotta find a client to value what you're doing because at any time when you try to show the value to someone you're you're selling you know what I mean? If mm. you're selling, they're not buying. So yeah. if, if they see the value in what you're doing, it the whole conversation is different. And I remember that just when we were offering free videos to people and like when I was building out my portfolio, 
And I was like literally offering videos to people for free. And they're like, no, I'm not interested. I'm just like, well, the video is going to help you do this and do that. And um, it just came down to me talking to somebody else. So they're like, dude, that sounds awesome. Like, when can we shoot? You know what I mean? And the whole experience working with somebody that actually wanted to do a video versus someone that like didn't think video was a real thing. It's different. You know, you produce a way better project. Um, the, the whole process is a lot better. They're not like nitpicking everything. What are you using to track all your stuff? Uh, like finances and everything? Yeah. Um, I have a software called FreshBooks, probably very similar to QuickBooks. It, it works really well for me. I'm pretty good about keeping track of all my expenses and everything in there. Okay, and it's cool. linked with like my bank account, tracks mileage and everything, everything you'd need it to. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, that's really, I mean, that was fun. I didn't do that to like, I think my second year, but then after that, I was like, I don't know what took me so long to do it, but uh, definitely just made my life a lot easier at the end. At least also knowing like what's my estimated tax that I'm going to have to pay. Cause that was something else that uh, really helped. Cause like, you know, when you actually start making some more money, you start, I was like, uh Oh, end of the year, because like, if you make a certain amount of profit, you're getting taxed on a profit. So I'm like, yeah, let me go buy some gear or, you know, invest his money somewhere else where it deducts our profits. So not that I don't want to pay the government their fair share of taxes, but I'd rather invest some money back into my business and make less money. Cause like I always laughed at the whole thing with like um Amazon when they said like Amazon, like Amazon's what? I don't know, is it a trillion dollar company yet? But they're Probably like close to yeah, but like they operate in a five percent profit margin. There's a reason mm. why because they pay a lot less taxes at five percent than they, they would do at 10 or 15. so every year amazon is just buying a bigger fleet of cars you know all these different things and the company is growing itself yeah they're making less money but the company keeps growing and growing and growing for you mm. figuring out like where is it that i could pay myself weekly and keep investing money into the company and then eventually you know at the end of the year like i gave myself a bonus which you could also you know deduct as part of your your profits but i mm. think when you get into the sense of like a weekly paying yourself because you have separate accounts for everything or um i have my personal account and then my business account and uh, do you have any business credit cards no just my debit card okay you should get a credit card i don't know what your okay. financial situation is but i would highly recommend that you get a business credit card and pay everything through your business through your credit card and there's a couple of different reasons for this one is that there's an extra level of protection that you're gonna get uh just when you're buying stuff because you're no longer every time you pay anything through debit card you're paying it with your money right now if you pay something yeah. with a credit card and it goes wrong it's mm. the bank's money the bank's yeah. gonna fire for you so like i had like you know, we had to go to a shoot in New Orleans and the Airbnb that we booked was in the Airbnb that we had. I try to call it Airbnb and they're like, sorry, you like checked in. I'm like, yes, I have nowhere else to go. Of course, I'm going to check in. Right. But then I called American Express and explained it to them. They put a hold on the charge from Airbnb and Airbnb refunded me the money. When I tried to do mm. with Airbnb, they're like, no, like, sorry. Also, like, um, you get like most of credit cards to give you like an extra year of warranty on your product purchases as well. That eventually is going to help you start building out your business credit. But I think the level of protection that you're going to get uh, by just having a, a credit card, because then you're also leveraging money to be able to grow your business. And I think that's really important too, as part of like, as you start growing and starts getting bigger, the fact that you're 20 right now, by the time you're like 25, like eventually you'd want to get like a line of credit for your business, which then you could get anywhere between like, you know, 25,000 to a hundred thousand dollars that whenever you need to like get a, you know, you know, an influx of cash to be able to do something where you're able to, you know, borrow that money. So I think that's something that you should start like, you know, considering you don't need a line of credit today, but at least uh, get yourself like a business credit card um, just to start purchasing everything through your business through that card. And then just pay okay. everything off at the end of the month with that. So how do I budget managing money to make things happen? What did you mean for that question? I'm mostly thinking about how you're paying yourself. Uh, I've heard you talk about how you pay yourself like 500 bucks or whatever before. Um, is there just out of curiosity, is there like a benefit of doing that versus just like maybe giving yourself a percentage based off of the gig you're working? So like if you work like a $20,000 gig, you're making more off that personally? Here's the thing. It's your business. So you can do whatever you like. You know what I mean? There's mm. no, there's people that do both. And that's something else I was going to implement into my business this year, because like I'm at the point now that like I was looking into buying like, like an investment property and I talked to my tax guy and he's like, dude, like you make 550 bucks. Like you're making like, I'm making like on the books, I'm making like $2,500 a month. No one's going to fucking want to sell me a house. Right. So like it doesn't mm. make sense for me. So then like you could give yourself a base pay of that and then give yourself a percentage of 
uh, the projects that you're working on. But at the end of the day, he's like, as long as you're bringing in less than a hundred thousand dollars to your own name, he's like, you're fine doing your LLC, like however you want to do it. Um, uh, it really just comes down to like, what do you prefer? So for me, the reason I started doing it is because like when I first started out, my business account and my personal account were the exact same thing. You know what I mean? Whenever yeah. I needed money, I just pulled money out from it. And like the account was like, that's not the best way to do it. So he's just like, so every Friday, 8 a.m., I set up an automatic transaction of $550 gets transferred from my business account to my personal account. So I mean, I don't even look at it that much, but it's just like, it happens automatically. It's just there. It just kind of gave me more in a routine of like, okay, imagine me having to pay somebody to work on my company. And then really just gives you an idea of just like, hey, I need to be charging more money because if I'm only making this and it's fine for me to work for 550 bucks, so it's, I know I'm making more money than that at the end of the day, but it's like, okay, mm. if I brought in another person, how much would I have to pay somebody? And then you really start yeah. looking at both accounts, really start measuring everything. Yeah, I need to set that up like the automatic transfer situation because uh, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think anything within your business now that you can, that it could be an automatic process, like the sooner you start implementing systems and creating SOPs, it's really the way to grow your business. And that even comes down to like, if you ever have a day that you're just like, for me to have a day that I'm just bored doesn't really happen anymore. But like, I <laughs> literally wrote down the sequence of like, hey, when we arrive to a shoot, this is what happens. You arrive to the shoot, check in with your lead or your DP before you go in, make sure your whole like team is together. When you're setting up light stands, this was a light, like literally an SOP that like I can give to somebody and they can go in and set up a shoot. And the sooner you start having those guidelines in place, the sooner you can start bringing in somebody to start helping you like do these shoots and start growing your business. I mean, we kind of, you were giving me some hints on some pricing and a lot of stuff so i know we're running short on time so however much you're fine i mean we, we we got time dude i don't uh i don't mind talking to you about this stuff so so what's your question then yeah so pretty much exactly what it says i know you were telling me based off what i'm making right now for clients you think i could be charging more uh, mm -hmm. which I, I think that's my own fault i think i anchored low when i presented that to them on accident yeah and they were just like oh that's the number cool <laughs> we'll take that thankfully we haven't actually this is like super new like that package uh mm -hmm. we haven't even put together i haven't had them sign the contract yet maybe that's another mistake but that'll work itself out yeah <laughs> but so i have a lot of stuff coming up within the next two months that i think are going to be uh more documentary style shoots which i really love making um and mm -hmm. it's kind of like a more longer term goal of mine is to focus more on documentary stuff and I, I just, I've never actually made a documentary, a paid one before, and I have no idea like what the pricing world is like for that and the opportunity with that. So I don't know if you have experience with that, but I don't have much experience. I've, I've like shot some stuff that's been using documentaries, but I've never actually like ran a whole documentary project. The biggest things I know with documentary, depending on who you're working with, what you're doing is that some of them offer you for you to get a percent. It also depends like where's the documentary going, right? So like uh, my sister's boyfriend, he does a lot of docs out in LA. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one that I worked out with him was gonna be, uh, he's working on something that's gonna be on Amazon. And uh, I'm gonna get a percentage of uh, the revenue generated from the documentary when it's actually being played through Amazon. So mm -hmm. that was like the way that we had structured that. Other people just want you to DP and they want your like DP rate. So I think it's you understanding um, where that comes along. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the other thing comes down to people's budgets. Cause like, you know, I think documentaries are great, but unless the person that you're shooting a documentary with has either a plan for distribution, which I think where I think a lot of people need to start backwards and like have distribution in place for the documentary before then. So yeah. people like I'm shooting this documentary, you know, I'm like, that's great. Tell me more about it. And they're like, Oh, I have like a thousand dollars. I'm just like, yeah. yeah. Cause like editing a documentary, dude, it's just like, you just imagine exporting a 10 minute video. Now imagine like exporting a documentary, like how, like there's just so much more that goes into it that people don't actually take into consideration. The editing um, is so wild too. Dude, it's a lot. Like, I mean, the guy we shot, this uh we did a documentary on uh like uh prison art like uh mm -hmm. pretty much prisoners and like what they actually used to make art inside of prison so we like interview like inmates interview like different art teachers and stuff like that but like i mean the documentary's been two years now that like he's still finishing up the editing for that mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's crazy and then there's like the other parts of like 
I don't know what your role will be within these documentaries when it comes down to editing too, depending on where they want to distribute the documentary to. There's like translation of different languages, subtitles that need to be done in different languages. You know, there's a lot of different things. So I think having an understanding like, hey, what's the goal? Where's this going to be aired? Or like, what are the responsibilities that, what are you going to need from my end, right? Because the last thing you want to be like, hey, I'll do this documentary. Then it comes down to them to do distribution and they're like, hey, we need this translated to different things and da 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 da. And you don't, you don't know anything about that. So gotcha. you know anything about the projects or? Yeah, I'm actually, it's kind of come together last minute. I'm flying to Texas um, Wednesday through okay. Friday. Uh, there's like a referee camp where all the referees for soccer are trained. The woman I'm working with is actually the co-owner of the gym uh, that I'm uh, making content for. And her husband is like one of the most hated referees in soccer. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty amazing title. <laughs> and so they they feel like there's not a lot of representation um, for referees, um, mm -hmm. you know, as a group of people and as athletes even. Yeah. Uh, so it, literally what you were just talking about, like, they just know they want to make it. And now is the window to make it like the next 30 days. Mm -hmm. But all they know is they want to film it. There's nothing mm -hmm. after that. And they're, they were asking me for quotes on it. I'm like, I can't quote you the whole project if you don't know like what even the final edited piece is going to be. So I told them, considering the traveling and everything, I told them I could shoot it and bring my minimal like gear set up for 2000 a day. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be there for like two days filming. But okay. I think after that, like that's kind of where things are unclear is like after it's shot, Thankfully, I have ownership over the footage at that point, just looking at what kind of edits they're going to need from that and how it's going to be, be, you know, put out there. Yeah, I mean, I think the but in like in this, the way that I would approach something like this is I'll start like, first of all, I'll start with like with like YouTube. I'll start like because like there's a lot of different things that you can pick up momentum from or even get funding later on, like. You can do a video that like gets traction on YouTube or Vimeo, and then you can get more funding. And I think a great example of this, did you see the, uh, the Will Smith, not the Will Smith, but the Bel Air remake that they did? I think I had seen trailers around. I haven't actually watched it. Okay. So that trailer, the guy that shot that trailer didn't actually have a show. They just reshot. They just shot a trailer for a remake. He ended oh. up getting funding from the Peacock network to actually produce the whole TV show now. Oh man. But the trailer picked up so much traction that like Will Smith flew the guy out. And he's like, dude, this is dope. He's like, what do you need? And he's like, we're looking to get funding to actually produce this. Wow. That's so, wow. so in a sense, maybe you shoot a trailer for this to get mm. general interest on like, you know, like, Hey, here's a goal. We have enough footage. Let's shoot a kind of trailer, two or three minute kind of teaser for what this could be like. If I can go like all the different sports networks of like, yo, this is what we're filming. We're filming this. This is a thing about referees. You know what I mean? What kind of budgeting can you guys allocate to this? And then like get mm. some real money behind it. So that would be one way to kind of approach that. But that's definitely great. like the shooting with the, like the, the goal, because then that's when they're like, oh, this is not working out for us. Of course, it's not working out. You had no game plan. It's like, yeah. you know, you're a trainer. You're not going to go to the gym and just work out some random fucking things you're gonna like okay today we're gonna do this this and this and tomorrow this this and that because these are gonna be the results you're gonna look for it's like the exact same thing for for the video so at least now yeah. i think like if you go spend some time on youtube and kind of like look up different like trailers and like into the like best sports and then film stuff that like um was it 30 i'm not really like huge not that i'm not huge into the sports thing but like um you know they did a series with michael jordan i heard so much about that yeah so like i'd spend some time doing some research research into those shows or like is it i don't know if it's 30 30 or whatever the other sports one I, is yeah, I don't know. but okay so like but look at those things because like they have a certain framework of something that already works the tv mm -hmm. station is already producing right yeah. if you can make it look something like that that's what's going to interest people i think sometimes we'll we'll do a project without looking at what has worked in the past and of course i think we could bring your own creative flair but there's a reason why those shows run over and over again so if you can mimic their style it's a lot easier for you to go to them and be like yo espn i know you guys are doing this 30 30 i'm doing this thing about referees here's a trailer we shot for it what's the interest mm. you know what i mean at least that but like, okay we could fuck with this like this like looks like something we've actually already produced makes it a lot easier for them to want to buy in into it i'm hoping that won't be too difficult to do either because the the woman who i'm working with on this and who putting me on the project is actually already like a commentator on espn okay. for men's soccer okay so i'm hoping she like will have the connections already to like bring those discussions up because i definitely don't yeah so i think 
you know, we'll see how that goes. Like just hearing you talk about that, though, has opened up kind of in my mind some more windows for that potentially into more work that I'd want to be doing in the future. So one of my buddies, he does uh, bare knuckle fighting. And there's these two kids right now that because uh, bare knuckle fighting is like the newest like thing within the martial arts space within fighting. But there's two kids that um, they pretty much pitch the owner to like let them shoot a documentary behind like you know the bare knuckle fighting and like what kind of goes into it and you know they're working on some like licensing agreements between them but their whole goal is to shoot like you know uh, a documentary or like some mini style doc that uh kind of shows what the bare knuckle fighting thing is about and i think something that we don't always think about is like there's so many different avenues for content nowadays and like and when you're flying to um to texas like spend some time like download whatever, I don't know who you're flying with, even airplanes or like airplane networks need content. So, um, you know, uh, you know, what's a really good one. Michael Phelps did one about gold medalist. I think it was like something to gold, the weight of gold. So the whole mm. thing talks about how, um, how these gold medalists go through all these like you know obstacles to actually go to the olympics but they were like a lot of um like one of the chicks that uh won the gold medals she was working at fucking home depot and people would come up to her and be like didn't you just win the gold medal and you're working at home depot and they're like yeah if we win the gold medal we get like eighteen thousand dollars in the united states where there's other countries they'll pay you like two hundred thousand dollars for you to win a gold oh, medal wow. so like you know but it's like the training that goes behind um you know being a gold medalist you have to pay your coaches you have to pay housing so like you might make all this money at the end of the day for winning uh a gold medal but then all the money goes away so fast because you have to pay all these debts so like start looking at documentaries like that but that gave me the idea of like how dope would it be to find these gold medalists and then shoot a training series where, like hey you want to learn how to ice skate learn from a fucking gold medalist because a lot mm. of them don't have a revenue stream after they win like you know they're just they're just competitors and then like what do they mm. do right so like what about like what about if you learn how to catch a football from willie sneed like a football player like doing stuff yeah. like that so with all that like i was going like down a rabbit hole but then i was like what else <laughs> is on here so i started looking at the programming inside of like uh American Airlines, I was like, oh, so like they had a bunch of like short five to 10 minute videos about like, oh, we're going to Austin, Texas. And there's a guy that's just like literally walking through, like, we're going to go visit Austin, Texas, famous, like, you know, barbecue spot. And I'm just like, wow, there's all this programming that even though maybe I might not watch it, like I always watch to see what other people watching on there, but like some people were actually watching those shows. So there's a lot of different ways that like the sports content that you might be creating could be used as an outlet for like, it's no longer just, you know, YouTube, Vimeo or TV. There's like everybody needs content nowadays. I, I love that idea you said about the gold medalist, like training stuff. It's like masterclass, but for Olympians. It is, dude. I'm just like, wow. <laughs> it's a like, great idea. It's like, you know what I mean? Cause like when you, when you, like when I watch the documentary it was like it's so eye-opening to me because like you don't think that right you're like oh you're a gold medalist like you're probably well off and like she was literally doing an interview like at home depot and you're just like holy shit that's so incredible wow would you want to use this video for youtube would that be like valuable to you it's it's honestly it's and i tell people it's not so much about being valuable to me it's like it's valuable to other people because like in a sense like all the stuff that, you know, we talked about, it really helps someone that could be in your similar situation get through a yeah. hurdle. So for me, it, it's, you know, I want to help and I do what I can, but it's also hard. Like I couldn't formulate all the answers I had today without having somebody ask those questions. So yeah. it always comes down to like, do you want to, it's like, it's helpful to somebody else when I watch the channel, but like, of course it helps me because it gives me content. But at the end of the day, yeah. it's like, if I don't post it, like it won't, like it doesn't affect me in the sense yeah. it's more really about you know helping somebody else so i was just gonna say because i don't feel like we really dug into the crazy specifics of what i wouldn't necessarily want online so if you yeah. want to end up using it like i think that's fine and you know like you said if i think there's a lot of young filmmakers uh out there and that's kind of something like a little side hustle of mine i'm working on is like podcasts with people like yourself or people in creative industries just trying to figure out the entrepreneurial side of it at specifically like at a young age age because they attended like two different film schools and I learned nothing about running a business mm. literally okay. zero so I think there's a lot of people who you could help with that so if, if you think that's you know a possibility then by all means yeah man for sure if you ever need a, if you need a guest let me know that's funny too because there's like two film schools here in South Florida and I reached out to both of them about me coming in to talk about running a business and they both told me no that's so unfortunate I don't know why they do that do you know Ringling here in Sarasota? Have you heard of Ringling College? No. They literally, like, it's 40 grand a semester wow. at Ringling, 
one of the most prestigious art schools probably in the entire U.S. And everyone here in Sarasota is like, every time they meet me, they're like, wow, did you go to Ringling? The reality is I got accepted to Ringling on a scholarship, but it was still too expensive. Fuck. Frankly, like a lot of the kids who come out of that program, like unless they're already interested in what they're doing, they're not making great stuff. And they're not, not learning anything about business either. They're getting connections to be on set. Like they had the DP from like the Dark Knight come in mm. to Ringling, like crazy individuals. Yeah. But yeah, none of these places teach business. And unless you're getting these wild connections to be on film sets, assuming that's even what you want to do, like assuming you don't want to start your own business, you're screwed. I mean, that's right. So I, I learned that quickly because so my sister's boyfriend, he went to UCF for the film program. And then when he got out of school, he was struggling to get work. Like he would work on like short docs and there, like low budget music videos. But then it was just like, dude, could, like, you know, he couldn't find a job. And I was like, didn't they teach you this in school? And he was like, no. And I was like, okay, that's weird. And then the same thing, like, I think in, when you go to film school, they teach you about being, how to work in a film set. That's great. Yeah. But like, I remember when we, the first couple <clears throat> of projects he worked with me, we we're doing business stuff. I'm just like, dude, like pick up the pace. Like, you know, he's like, oh, like, let's frame a shot. I was like, I was like, this is not a movie set that we have two hours to frame a shot to get it perfectly. Like <laughs> we're, we're lucky we have two minutes with this guy to sit down and do this interview. Like it needs to be like, the pace is a lot different too. And they don't teach you about that. You know what I mean? Like, mm. I remember when he like working the monopod, I had this other girl too. I gave her a monopod and she's like, what do I like? How do I set this up? I'm like, don't you go to film school? And she's like, we don't use monopods in film school. I'm just like, they don't, yeah. they're not preparing you for the real world. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. and um, so one of the other girls that I connected with, she went to uh, FAU here and she was still going to school. She was finishing up school and she was like, start working with me. And she was like, dude, she's like, can you come in and talk to our, my classroom? Cause like, I'm telling, I'm going back to school. I'm telling my friends about this stuff I'm learning from you. And they're asking me a lot of questions. And I was like, mm -hmm. I was like, I'll love to So like, here's my teacher's information. Dude, like I got email tracking software, right? Dude, up on my email like five times, they didn't reply back to me. Just like did not like, you know, She's like, did you, con did you contact him? I was like, yeah. And it's like, did I hear from him? But it's just like, it's like, okay. But it, it is crazy because like, you know, school is one thing, but like, I mean, that's one thing I love about the future and Chris Dill, because like that really changed a lot for me. of just like learning how to talk. Cause like I learned a lot about filmmaking through YouTube, but like there's very little channels are talking about like, how do you actually make money as a creative entrepreneur? right yeah. like how do you yeah. actually ask the client for more money that's just something that i don't know how to do and like you know just learning how to talk about money it was like it, it makes such a huge difference because like we're creatives and we do it for the art and we do it for the passion so like when it comes about money we're like oh it's it's, it's such like you know this great area but it's just like man if you want to make it out here you got to get comfortable talking about it you got to yeah. talk to them as business owners so yeah the future is such a great resource that i've had like future obsession periods periods. Uh, one of them was like probably a year ago uh -huh. when I was charging like 300 bucks for a video and just working with people I hated, like people who had no respect for me or what I made. And um, after being introduced to them, I rose my rates up to what I thought would be acceptable. And then like recently after, you know, starting my business and looking at the like taxes for that and like being reintroduced to it again and taking it more seriously. I have been raising my rates even more like my minimums and then talking to you again. It's like you're saying I still got more to learn about that apparently. So yeah, they're they're a great resource. But really, that's why I have my podcast that I'm trying to get up and going and just mm -hmm. a platform for that because specifically for young people, there's nothing because nobody talks about that. Nobody in my, oh my gosh, six years of being in high school in my film course and in college, even if they're bringing people in, to talk about filmmaking, there's nothing related to business in there. Yeah, it's so. crazy. I mean, that was like, that was a wake up call for me. So I was just like, wow, it's like, it's kind of sad because I almost went to film school when I was even in New York, but I was going to be an out of state student. So I was like, mm -hmm. I looked at that. I was like, yep, yeah, can't go. It's like, I ain't going to go to film school. So it turned it's more to expensive YouTube. when you do that too. Yeah, it was, dude. So I was like, oh, I have to wait like another year before I can apply. And then kind of the same thing is like, even when I do apply, like I can't afford $20,000 a semester. I was like, that's fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, when you get that podcast, man let me know i love to hop on so yeah i have um already i mean if you're interested just super quick for you uh, on my instagram my latest reel that i put out is uh -huh. a really quick like one minute segment okay. um, from the conversation uh with a guy named bray he does film photography on I youtube bray hunziker 
yeah, I don't know yeah, if you're yeah. familiar with him, but he was nice enough to come on and he's a great guy and he has some other projects, like some video stuff in mind. Yeah, I, I did one with my friend James. He's a local DP that I still need to put together for next week, but I might definitely take you up on having you on that because, you know, from a business standpoint, I think you have a lot that you could give value to and shed light on. So love that. You know, if you're interested, of course. No, nah, I'm down, dude. I'm down. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm here to help. So uh, anything else in your mind? Uh, tiny question that I've just been thinking about since we talked about it is the Facebook groups for finding these people to edit. Do you have like a specific one? I don't even have a Facebook account right now. Not going to lie. Like I'm not on Facebook at the moment. Um, yeah. I have to ask my, my sister did all of that for me. So I think that's oh, wow. something. That, okay. Yeah. So like it's one of those things that like I started delegating as well of like having my sister work with me has been like such like a, a great thing but like just delegating that she kind of took care of all of that and then I kind of vetted the people that she found but we got like a whole list of people and like half of them actually I'll say 75% of them weren't good mm. but it's like you know it's, it's the cost of either you can spend more time and you could people were like I'll take three dollars an hour I'm like fuck that's tempting but then I'm like how much uh hand holding that you got to do and then recently we know we had a I don't know if you're in Twitter at all but like Chris been doing a lot more of those like business fundamental calls and he's like a problem with you guys is that you end up hiring someone that's not as good as you to do this because you're saving yourself money mm. and he's like you need to hire somebody that's at your level or better than you yeah. and I was like fuck I was like I definitely have not hired someone that's on my level or better than me but he was talking about because like uh Mo does all Chris's content right now for the future mm -hmm. and then he's like mo how many revisions do i give you he's like none and he's like you know why he's like because you're a better editor than me he's like i know mm. that I, I i know that you know what you're doing he's like and you guys over here like trying to hire somebody you know less qualified and then you have to deal with all these different things but for chris it makes sense right because he has the money to afford mo's rate yeah exactly so Th but that's, I, that's the other thing too like being at my level or your level or something similar is like people who are as good as you or better already have their thing going on and like really just I feel like wouldn't make financial sense to hire them a lot of the times unless they're giving you that buddy discount but like that's what count on. Chris is like that's we need to charge our money and I was like you're right so <laughs> I mean, I definitely do. I think sure. at least for you now, like, and every time like the next project comes in, so like whatever, like you're charging now is next time somebody calls, just like if your day rate is 800, tell them it's a thousand, you know what I mean? And the next person calls, tell them it's 1200. Cause you can always negotiate your rate back down. You know what I mean? But I think it's like, I remember the first time I, I told somebody that it was gonna be $1,800 for like a video. And they're like, okay. And I was like, I didn't charge enough because like they didn't yeah. budge on that. You know what I mean? I know they could have more, but I also just like get comfortable. I think another great way to just do this is just, hey, quick question. I'm not going to hold you to this, but where's the budget range on this project? Yeah. Like, oh, I don't really have a price. And then you're like, okay, videos normally like this are like around $2,000. Is that what you had in mind? And then be like, oh, I was thinking more like 1500. I was like, okay, it's a little bit lower than what we do, but I think we can make this work. You know yeah. what I mean? So just like, <laughs> Go out that number, let them try to get a budget from them. But if not, if they're asking you for a price, just start charging 25% more of your last project until eventually you, you want to start getting a couple of no's. Because if you're always just getting yes, you're not charging enough. I had that recently where I was feeling super confident one day and like was just realizing maybe my minimum should be four grand for a project. Who knows? And real estate agent of all people, I think they'd you know, have plenty of room to make money. They don't. But they, they I told them that and they were like, there's like a 15 second long silence and they're like, oh, we know people who probably make these for like 400, <clears throat> which is like a 10th of what I told them. And I was like, I mean, if it's working for you, go keep doing that. <laughs> yeah i'm not good i literally cannot even make a thousand make sense so. yeah yeah that's the thing like i thought like because here's the thing when real estate agents like they don't make money until the deal closes so in the front of that they're paying for all the marketing up front yeah so for them and i get it 400 bucks and i'm free to make a video that might work it might not work whatever the situation is it could be a lot for them especially when they're starting out so like when i do work with real estate agents now like the one girl that uh i'm working with talia we're building out her youtube channel we're only doing million dollar listings like mm. million dollars it's like it's called luxury home lux luxury home tours and it's like we're only doing like a million dollar listings and up to like show other places because like it has, it has to make sense for them yeah. you know what i mean um because before i was working with other people that they were like you know I, and i was 
had people that I that I knew that I was like, you know, I'll give you the hookup for 500 bucks. And like, can you do it for 300? I was like, I was like, no, I was like, I got to get my gear. I got to go out there. I got to shoot. I got to come back and edit. You can borrow the gear bucks. for 300. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, dude, I was like, no, thank you. I was like, I was, no, I'll sell you a course for $300 on how to shoot your real estate video, but that's going to be it. Yeah. True that. So, that's incredible. Yeah. I don't really work with realtors anymore. So I have one client that's a realtor and I love working with them and he's obsessed with video marketing it's like his mm -hmm. favorite thing so it kind of works out and we make it happen but and there is like you know and talia is that talia is that one for me like i like working in talia because it's like you know she's always listening to my recommendations she's like you're the video expert like you know i'll yep. do what, what do you want but then we have those other people that like you know they'll call you but like, hey i have 300 bucks and you're like i'm like no like i i, I can't do it for 300 dollars like go the whole thing like i can come and sh i could shoot for one hour you know what i mean for 600 dollars, but that's gonna be about it that's something yeah, else yeah. So i don't know if you ever do like one hour shoots just make sure that you have a two hour minimum yeah that's like i think that's super important because before i used to do that like oh one hour i was just charging for the one hour of filming two hour minimum at least yeah cool good to know great man well i'm uh gonna go to texas and come back and hopefully we can pick up some more helpful conversations for other people you know for sure bro for sure creative stuff i'd really love to have you on but yeah check out the did you see the reel did you watch it through yeah i did he was like uh, okay, good. yeah it was like it's cool i like the whole style and at first i wasn't really sure like i wasn't really sure sure like i was trying to figure out because i i know you talked about doing documentary stuff so i wasn't really sure like that was the kind of work that you're trying to do but like that was um it was cool yeah. thanks man. um i actually want to look at your website real quick it's really nothing special so uh i mean um wait is it password yeah so your password link sends out to like another website which i thought i thought it was like a spam first are you Oh, that's just broken. That's a broken link. Yeah, I, okay. I'm past few months has been all word of mouth work for me. Uh -huh. um, but I definitely need to not rely on that. So I'm gonna yeah. get on top of this. Yeah, let me know because I mean, there's definitely some recommendations I think for your website just to screw some things up. But I mean, you definitely need to get those other videos that you've been doing up on here. Yeah, I really want to get the dance one up. I don't know if you got a chance to watch that. That, that project's very special to me, and I think would be great online. But it's just not done yet. I can't put it out. Is that, oh, that's the one with the guy in the woods? Yes. Yep. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, at first I was like, well, because at first I don't know, I thought my computer audio wasn't working. So you start No, walking. that scene, I need to do Foley for it, just like okay. bed sheets. Yeah, yeah that, we, we, I was in Nashville when we shot that and they had tornadoes come through that insane tornado storm, like mid December. Uh -huh. Yeah. And so 3 a.m. the night before set, like tornado sirens are going off and we're all like hunkering down under the wow. house. And <laughs> the director's like, should we push the time back an hour like for set? But thankfully everyone was okay. But I mean, I think there were close to a hundred people that died from that storm and yeah. we were just on set the next day. It was really wild. Crazy. Okay, man. Well, I'll let you go. Sure you Hi, brother. Work Good on. chatting, man. I'll, uh, Appreciate it. As soon as it finishes downloading, I'll uh, upload it to Dropbox and send it to you. Um, Thanks so much. You have business contracts? Yeah. Yeah. You do? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. I mean, right. if I don't know how good they are. Uh, they've I'll served send, me well I, so far. I'll send you a link to mine in case um, you want to use them. So Okay. Thanks. I really appreciate that. All right, bro. For sure. Take care.